Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Tonight we are talking about infusible inks and what kinds of t-shirts, so what kind of fiber content and what colors we can put them on on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So ever since Cricut's infusible inks came out, folks have been asking me what we can put them on. Now Cricut has a lot of official blanks. They have t-shirts and they have tote bags and they have coasters. But what if you are a different size than the t-shirts that are available? Because this, the sizes I believe are small to 2x. So what if you're a larger size? Or what if you like a different style of t-shirt? Or what if you want a different color? Or a whole lot of different things. What if you don't want 95% polyester and you want and 5% spandex, which is what the Cricut shirts are. What if you need a little bit more cotton content, right? So tonight we are going to look at over 15, it's actually 19 different t-shirts that I have already tested and already washed. So we're gonna look at them, we're gonna look at them, in some cases, we're gonna be able to see what they look like before they are washed, but we'll be able to compare what they look like after they've been washed so you can see how they held up and how they look in the first place and everything like that. Now, if you have questions, please feel free to shout your question out and I will do my best to answer it. Uh, my team is here. Thank you guys so much for being here and we'll help out with questions uh, to the best of their ability. And I actually have a blog post that has links to the t-shirts that I found on Amazon and um, but actually it's a list of all of the shirts that we're testing tonight. It's over on my blog at jennifermaker.com. It's called, I think, Cricut Infusible Ink T-shirts, What Works Best. So you're welcome to go over there if you want to actually know where I found these shirts on Amazon or which brand it is because I found some at Walmart and, of course, the Cricut brand shirt is available at Michael's right now. So I think that I would like to start with the white shirts and show you the, all of the different shirts that I tested and then show you what they look like before we wash them and after we wash them. So let's head on over to my workspace and I can explain what I have done for you. And also I can, I'm gonna check the screen and look for questions as well. All right, so let's head on over there and take a look. Okay, so here is my stack of white t-shirts. There's quite a few of them here. They have all, I have already put them, put the image on. I have used the exact same image on every single one so we can compare and look at the color transfer and everything. I, I picked this rainbow transfer sheet that comes in. This is the Shaley infusible ink box. So it's this one right here. And I put this winged heart on every single one of these 19 shirts to show you. And so this one here at the top, this is the Cricut shirt. This is the one that um, is sold at Michael's stores right now exclusively. It's at Michael's stores. And um, this is the one that Cricut guarantees that their infusible inks will work on. But as you can see, there's a lot more shirts here that I tested with. So we're going to find out what else works, especially in terms of the fiber content for these, because these are all white, which is like really the perfect color to use infusible inks on. Because infusible inks are not like vinyl, where it just sits right on top of the surface. It is instead an ink, it's a kind of sublimation ink that actually infuses into the surface of the t-shirt. So there's nothing here, it just feels like t-shirt. So it's really very awesome. If you're not familiar with infusible ink technology, I have lots of videos. I have an ultimate guide to it. We did, we've done several play tests on how this works. In fact, here's a quick little preview of me creating all 19 of these t-shirts using my Cricut Easy Press 2 and infusible ink. Now this is sped up a lot, as you can imagine, but you can see here how I am putting the infusible ink transfer, which is the heart with the wings, that I created on my Cricut onto my t-shirt. Note that I'm using the paper underneath to protect my mat, as well as two sheets of butcher paper on top of my shirt to protect from scorching and that sort of thing. It's also important to note that I am preheating each of these shirts before I put my design on. I'm using Cricut's instructions. So we are heating the, my Easy Press is at 385 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm doing the uh, pressing for 40 seconds. 
which is exactly what the Cricut Easy Press Heat Guide tells us to do. Now, of course, it doesn't know that I'm using all these different kinds of shirts, so I'm simply following the same directions for all of the shirts. So all the shirts are 385 degrees for 40 seconds. I also want to note that normally you want to wait before you remove the transfer um, for the shirt. You want to wait till it cools down. I edited this video so you weren't just watching nothing while it, I waited for it to cool down. So that's just important. Again, if you're not familiar with how to use infusible ink, please check out my tutorials. I have a great tutorial on how to do t-shirts that shows you step by step exactly what to do. And I'm putting that link for you right here on the screen so you can just head on over there and check it out. Now let's look at each t-shirt that I tested with Cricut Infusible Ink up close. This is the Cricut shirt. And this is what we're going to compare everything to. So this is the one that, guarantee, that Cricut guarantees will work with its infusible ink transfer sheets and markers. Okay, so let's compare how this looks to the what it looks like before it was washed. So let me move that over. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Um, on the left, you can see the pre-washed version and on the right you can see it washed and you can see it looks identical. There's no difference at all. Okay, next shirt. So this is the one that hopefully everything will look as good as this. This is, I mean, this is our goal. It's not going to happen guys, but this is what we would like. Okay. Now remember, infusible ink really needs polyester or polymer to bind to. And that's why it's so important what our shirt content is. All right. So here is 100% polyester. This is what it looked like before we washed it. And this is what it looks like after. It looks the same to me. And this is um, a shirt that I found on Amazon. It is kind of feels like an athletic shirt. It's sort of shiny rather than being soft, right? But it takes the infusible ink really, really well. And there's a link to, the, if you want to find this shirt, there's a link to this in my blog um, and then my blog post. Okay, so next one. So this is the 92% polyester, 8% spandex. Still looks the same to me. 92% polyester is really, uh, really a high count of polyester. So this looks good. So again, the one on the left is the pre-wash, and this one is after it's been washed. Okay, so this looks great. This shirt is a no boundary shirt, and I got it from Walmart for, I don't know, like five bucks or something. Very inexpensive. Okay, next shirt is 90% polyester. So, and this one didn't quite, like something happened. I've seen this happen once in a while and I haven't figured out what it is. It's possible that it's just not a good shirt to start with, I don't know. So this is a Terra and Sky shirt that I also found at Walmart. 90% polyester, 10% spandex. And it's the color looks the same to me as I did before I washed it. I don't see any difference in color, just we have this kind of faded spot here. And again, I don't know if it's because of the quality of the shirt, which is certainly possible, or if it's um, just user error. <laughs> All right, next shirt. So this is an 80% polyester, 20% cotton. And now I think that we can see just a tiny little bit of fading, maybe. Maybe I'm just seeing things. They actually look really similar to me. So this is a Fruit of the Loom shirt, um, and it came like a pack of four. It was really affordable. I got this on Amazon, I believe, and I have the link to this one in my blog post. And um, But it looks really good. Now, the only thing that I see, like looking at it with my naked eye, which you guys might not be able to see, like I... I don't know, it does look a little bit, just a tiny bit faded. You can see the fibers of the cotton kind of peeking through, but it's not bad or anything, it's, it's not bad. All right, next shirt is a 65% polyester, 30% cotton George brand. And this comes from Walmart. And I think it looks really similar to the one that we just saw, just a little bit of fading, not so vibrant. And let's just, to, to compare, let's get out the Cricut one over here so you can see. So this here is the Cricut one. You see that? You see how it is a little bit more vibrant? I don't know if you can see that, right? It's definitely the green and the yellow, they're all popping just a little bit more. But 
not bad. And these shirts are really inexpensive. Now, I want to note that the George actually has two different polyester cotton um, blends. One has a lot of polyester and one has a lot of cotton. So you'll want to check the label and don't just assume if you go to Walmart looking for George that you got the right one. Okay, so this is the 65 polyester, 30% cotton. All right, so this here is, now I can, you guys can definitely see a difference here, right? So this is the 40% polyester, 60% cotton, George brand. This is um, also from Walmart. And these are like base, I found them really close to each other. And they're like in the men's section, by the way. Um, I didn't really find any of these in the women's section, but but I think this is a V-neck. Yeah, this is a V-neck. So, I mean, it still looks like a nice shirt, but you can see the fading here, right? You can see that, that it's just sort of more washed out, right? Now, note that how it looked when you first did it and how it looks now, right? So the thing is, is that even though it looks really good when you first make it, if you're putting it on something that isn't able, where the ink's not able to bind with it, you're gonna get this fading, okay? Maybe you're okay with that, but this is after one wash. I don't know how it's gonna look in 10 washes or 50 washes. It could get really light, okay? So keep that in mind. And let's look at the last one, which is 100% cotton. So, <laughs> this is a huge difference. I mean, this is like pastel now. So this is 100% cotton. Now on the left, we can see that it, it came in faded. It started faded, right? Which, it kind of looks nice. Um, it has a, like a retro look, right? It's totally cool. But this is after one wash. Look at, this is like super pastel now. This is almost like something a baby might wear. But the thing is, is that after... I'm, I'm sh I feel really confident that after a few washes, we're barely going to be able to see this. It's just going to look like a mistake at that point. So 100% cotton is not going to be a good choice to use with infusible ink. Even though it might look okay when you first put it on after washing it, it's just going to be a disappointment. I really recommend that you pay attention to your polyester count. The higher you go up, the more vibrant it gets and the longer it's going to last when you wash it, right? I mean, look, these look really awesome. I mean, this one, I have no, I can't, it's amazing. I mean, look at how that, that good. In fact, let's just compare this one to the cotton. I mean, look at the difference here, guys. That is a huge difference. This is, they're both have been washed exactly the same. They were washed together. So big, big difference. The more polyester you have, the better it's going to look. So hopefully that helps you guys. And of course, you can see that there's a lot of different shirts. Because the thing is, is that I know that the Cricut shirts aren't going to work for everybody. They don't come in all the sizes. They don't even have, um, they don't even have sizes for like kids right now. They just have the small through 2X in the women's and the men's. And at my Michaels, I couldn't even find the 2Xs. So if you can find them, I mean, I think that these shirts are, the Cricut shirts are really, really amazing because they're super, they don't even feel like polyester. They, this one feels like polyester, this one here, this one definitely feels like polyester. This, their Cricut shirts don't, they're very soft. There's something about the way that they're woven and the, the type of fibers that they're using that's making a difference. So if the Cricut shirt is available in your size and style, get that, and if it's not, then use one of these alternatives, okay? All right, so do you guys have any questions about these various white shirts before I switch over to the colored shirts? Because I did all of those, and I would love it to show you those. <clears throat> Ginger says, can we use 100% polyester? Yes, totally. This is 100% polyester. This is right here. It looks amazing. It looks great. It will work I believe it's gonna work just as well as the Cricut shirts do. Um, and really, it just it looks amazing. It's very vibrant. <clears throat> Peggy says, I have a 100% polyester sheet that's too big for my bed. I am gonna have fun playing. And you know something, Peggy? That's a great idea. I had thought about going to the fabric store and just getting a bunch of fabric in different sizes to test, but I wanted to be able to show you actual 
t-shirts that you could purchase, like at whatever store, because I know that you guys are looking for t-shirts. All right, so I think that, oh, Alex asked, where is a 100% polyester shirt from? This comes from Amazon. This is the Hanes Cool Dry. And this is a women's shirt, but they have them in um, this women's V-neck. So it's a really nice fitted shirt. But they also have them in men's and stuff. I really like this. This I've gotten this brand several times. It is polyester. It's like it has very, very smooth rather than soft finish. But hey, maybe that's okay with you. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to the colored shirts. Here is... Uh, the stack of colored shirts. I got a whole bunch of colors. Now you'll note that they're mostly pastel because this is ink. It's not vinyl. It's ink and it's transparent ink. It's not going to look good on like a navy blue shirt. And we're going to talk about that later. Don't worry. Um, it's going to look, if you're going to put it onto a colored shirt because you don't like white or whatever, it's going to look best on these light pastel colors. Okay. Um, otherwise it's just not going to be visible because it's transparent ink. All right, so we're going to start with a 100% polyester shirt. This is a 100% polyester shirt. It's the same cool dry Hanes shirt that I showed you in the white one, okay? I got this from Amazon. Exact same shirt, V-neck women's shirt. Can you see this white outline here? This is where my piece of transfer, let me see if I have one I can show you. So this is the infusible ink transfer. So, you know, it was on here like this. So see the marking here? So I've seen this show up on a number of people's shirts that they posted. And I don't know why it does, but it's there even after we washed it. So you need to watch for this because maybe you're okay with this. Maybe you're not okay with this, right? Um, but the color looks pretty good. You can see how the blue basically... Is, there's like no blue because it's on a blue shirt, right? And that's significant. And also because this is transparent ink, a lot of the colors are changing from what we would see on white to, you know, like this is supposed to be yellow, but it looks green, right? So that's something to take into account, right? This should be pink and it looks like it's purple, right? But it transferred pretty well and it washed really well, okay? So this one has that box around it, all right? This one, oh my gosh, I really dislike this shirt. This shirt came from Walmart and it's a very vibrant color, don't you to say? So I did this, let's see if I can even show you, I can. And you know, when we do infusible ink, we need to, co we need to uh, cover our mats so that the infusible ink itself does not bleed through onto our pressing mats. Well, look what this lovely shirt did. It was, it's so vibrant. I washed these, by the way. It was so vibrant that it transferred its own ink to my pressing pad. And now I for, will forever have to be careful of this. <laughs> yeah, so this, this is not a shirt that I'm going to recommend to anybody. But I found it at Walmart. And it's 92% polyester, 8% spandex. And it's got this annoying box around it, again, from the transfer sheet. I don't know what this is caused for, by, but I personally don't like it. I don't like the way it looks at all. So I would say this is a no-go. <clears throat> yes. Yes, Alex, they were all pre-washed. Okay. So here is the 80% polyester, 20% cotton athletics work shirt. I found this at Walmart. It was in the clearance section. I don't even know if they still sell this, but whatever. <laughs> it's like actually a tank top or a racer back shirt or something. So, um... I can't really see a white box around this one. Of course, it's got a different texture too. It actually came out really well, you know? Um, it uh, doesn't look like it faded very much, maybe just the tiniest bit, but not much. It's pretty good. Um, and the colors are vibrant. And amazingly, the pink still transferred to this one. I guess it was light enough. I don't know, it's interesting. Um, but this one was actually pretty good. So this one came from Walmart, again. <clears throat> so Rhonda says maybe the design can be cut closer to get rid of that scare, get rid of the square and apply heat um, and use infusible heat tape. Yeah, I think that's a possibility. You would have to cut all the way through or trim around it, and that might be a lot of work. But here's the thing is that you'll notice that on other shirts you can't see it. So it's something about 
I'm thinking it's something about the way this shirt is colored, but I don't know for sure. Just taking a wild guess here. This here is 65% polyester, 35% cotton. This is the same George brand that I showed you in the white shirts, which I think is actually pretty a pretty good, um, I think it's a pretty, I mean, they're really inexpensive. And I don't know, I think four or five dollars per shirt. And they come in a lot of different sizes, a lot of different sizes and different colors. So I like this. This um, has a tiny bit of fading, but it's it looks really good to me still. So I think this is a winner. And I actually got a bunch of these so we could look at how the color transferred to these. So that's the purple one. And I'll slide these over so we can compare. This is a blue one. Same exact shirt, just different color. So again, it looks a lot better on this purple than it does on the blue. The blue is definitely changing the transparent ink in a different way. And that's significant if you are, you know, what color you're trying to decide. I Actually, this isn't pink. This is purple. I don't know what color I said. This is purple, just so that's clear. And this is like a light blue. <clears throat> the George brand is from Walmart. And again, it's important to note that they come in different. They have some that have more polyester and some that have more cotton. You want the ones with more polyester. It really is going to make a difference. Here is another one, and this is a, it's kind of a orangey pink color. It's, I guess salmon, we would call it, call that. And it looks, you know, I can see fading here. It might be hard to see in the camera. I'm looking at it from a different angle. You know, I can kind of see it like at a 45 degree angle so I can see the fibers of the cotton shirt better. Still looks really good though. I think that looks really good. I think this is actually a good shirt. So after testing it, what, six times? I think I tested it six times. Okay, so here, so this here is a totally different shirt. This is a Gildan shirt that I found, I believe at Michael's, maybe it was at Joanne's. It was at one of the craft stores and it's 50% polyester and 50% cotton. And um, it's blue, so the design didn't transfer as well as it might have done in a lighter color, um, a more pinker color, but it did transfer pretty well. Hard to say how long it'll continue to hold up in the wash, but it looks pretty good right now. All right, so here is the George brand that is um, less cotton, sorry, less polyester and more cotton. And while this looks, this design looks pretty good because this is such a light color, it's pretty faded. Um, I don't know if I have one I could compare. We can compare it to this pink one over here. Let's set these aside. So here is, this is 80% um, cotton, sorry, 80% polyester. And this one here is the 40% polyester. And you can see that this is quite a bit more vibrant than this, right? So, you know, I mean, but maybe you're okay with it. Maybe you're okay wearing your shirt for a few times and it's not that big of a deal. Maybe it's a special occasion shirt, right? I mean, there's always possibilities here. Nothing is ever really, you know, if you really, really like cotton more, you know, just wear your shirt a little less or use it as a save it. <laughs> um, so this is, I think this is actually still pretty. I think it's going to fade a lot more as we wash it though, just so you know. All right. And let's look at 100% cotton that's been washed. It looked a little better when we put it, put it on initially. This is what it looks like when it's been washed. You can't even see the color at this point. It's just kind of like some green and some brownish colors. And I think that if we wash this like five, five um, more times, I bet it would be just barely a shadow of something that was here once. <laughs> Ginger says a solid infusible ink would probably look good on the guild and blue shirt. You know, so they're all the all of the infusible inks, they're all transparent. So if we had used purple, it would look like this. Right? If we had used green, it would look like this. So you can't this is actually sorry, this is pink, not purple. <laughs> sorry, right? So this is orange, this is pink, this is like red. This is purple here, and this is blue. So, you know, I mean, it's still going to take on the color underneath it. So remember our color wheel? And when we mix colors, we're going to get these, we're going to get a different color than what you expect when you put it onto something that's got the base color is this dark. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, so let's see. 
Yes, so someone mentioned the black shirt, so we're gonna talk about that. Because of course we tested a black shirt, guys. I said I would. Here is our black shirt. <clears throat> and yes, I put infusible ink on this. <laughs> I'm gonna move this. So this is got the design. Let's see if we can see this at all. It has been washed. You can, can kind of see right here. You guys probably can't see that, but I can kind of see a rectangle there. Gosh, it's not even focusing. It's like just black. <laughs> Let's put this back on, give it something to focus on. There truly is fusible ink here. Let me show you about where it went. It's probably right about, I'm gonna match it up to this rectangle. It looks like it was right about here. Okay, this is where I put it. The thing is though, infusible ink is transparent. So what happens when we put transparent anything on black? We get this, we get nothing. This is what it looks like. Just don't even bother, don't do this because it's a waste of your infusible ink. It's not, it's, there literally is infusible ink on this, but because it's transparent, you cannot see it, okay? But if anyone saw my preview image, then you saw that I did have something on a black shirt. Okay, and by the way, this, if you're curious, this is a uh, George shirt with 40% polyester, okay? All right, so let's flip this shirt over so I can show you. Now, I tried some different things. First off, I tried white flocking vinyl that I got, it's like a, let's see if I can find that. Yes, here it is. I tried, uh, Caesar Strip Flock Pro HTV. Just, I don't know, just for the heck of it, just to see what would happen. And I put the white on first, and then after the white was so white, I applied it normally, like you would normally apply a heat transfer. And then over the top of the white, I put my infusible ink. And as you can see, it did indeed transfer, right? It's not glow in the dark now, but it did transfer. And this has been washed. It's still there, guys. It is still there. So that was my first test to see if we could get this infusible ink on a black shirt. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth would anybody care? Just use vinyl. And I agree. You probably just want to use vinyl. But if you just love the, infus the infusible ink patterns, you just really want to put this on a shirt of your choice, then these are our options. So this is using the Strip Flock Pro HTV. I found this at Michael's, by the way. I think there's actually a better product. I think it's called um, Sub Flock, and I think it's actually better at absorbing the sublimation ink. So I haven't, I don't have my hands on it yet, but I have heard about it, okay? So this is um, Flocking HTV. But then uh, Miranda, who is my, Miranda is my customer service angel. She said that she saw on YouTube that people were using glitter a heat transfer vinyl. So I got some of that and this is what happened. So this is white glitter heat transfer vinyl. Uh, Julie says, did I spray that? No, that this, this is heat transfer vinyl. This is vinyl. So is this, these are both vinyl and they come white like this. So here is the white glitter and here is the, the flock. The flocking is like super like soft stuff, right? From like the 70s, right? You know, like the wallpaper, that kind of flocking. So this started as white glitter uh, heat transfer and I cut out my heart in the same, you know, the same heart and I put it onto the black shirt in the normal way that you put on heat transfer, nothing special. And then I took my, um, my infusible ink transfer and I put it right on top of the white glitter heat transfer and I, did, I follow the normal directions for pressing it. So I believe I did this at 385 degrees for 40 seconds, which is what I did all of these shirts at, by the way. And this is what I got. And doesn't this look amazing? So this has been washed and it still looks to me as good as it did when I put it on. It did not fade at all. This one faded. This one did not fade. This one looks really, really good. I think that this white, so if you really just really want to put uh, infusible ink onto a black or like a navy blue or a dark purple shirt, then this is what you should do. Put some white glitter, heat transfer vinyl, and by the way, this is the Cricut brand. This is, um, we just got, bought this down 
at our Joann's. That's five minutes from our house. I actually sent Greg out. I said, Greg, I need some white glitter. Heat transfer vinyl. He's like, okay. He did it for me. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> and then I put this on here and it worked. So this is not my original idea. I think that this existed long before we had infusible ink because I believe, because I went and looked it up on YouTube and people have been putting, um, doing this for sublimation ink for years. Okay, so this is not, I'm not taking credit for this idea. But thank you, Miranda, for letting me know about this. So yeah, so if you really want to use a dark shirt, uh, Becky says, does the glitter show through? Yeah, you can, it's very pretty actually. Let me show you. Let's see if we can get this closer in the light here. Can you guys see the glitter? See, isn't that pretty? I think it's really pretty. It, it, it really, the glitter actually makes the colors pop a little bit more. So, and someone had concerns that it would wash right out, but didn't for me. The flocking did, but not this. This looks great. So, there we go. All right, so I'm going to switch back over to me, and I'm going to see if you guys have questions, okay? All right, awesome. So... Let's see. So Stephanie says, I just joined this live stream and I tried the infusible ink on a mint green shirt and it came out beautiful. Awesome. I'm super glad to hear that. I've been seeing a lot of people using pastel shirts that looks great. Remember the key is the higher the polyester count, the better it's going to look. And one thing I want to note, as we move down from into the higher cotton shirts, I notice more scorching going on. The cotton does not like the super high temperatures at the at the lengths that we need to go to for infusible ink. And when I did the 100% cotton shirt, I saw weird brown marks show up on my shirt. And I want to see if they came out in the wash. Okay, so this is the 100% cotton shirt. Um, you know, it doesn't really, I don't really see, it looks like a lot of it might have washed out. It doesn't look too, maybe just a little bit. I can kind of see on the sides, just a tiny little bit. Uh, if I wasn't looking for this, I wouldn't be able to see any scorching. So it actually, whatever, the discoloration did come out when we washed it. So that's good. So if you're seeing discoloration in your cotton shirts, which probably you shouldn't be using guys, but if you want to use them anyways, try washing them to see if you can get that out. Just keep that in mind. So if it, if it scorches, it's just, cotton just doesn't like it that hot for that long. Ludi says, do you think it would work better on cotton with the glitter first? Yep. Yep. If you really want to use, have a 100% cotton shirt, and but you really want infusible ink because you love those patterns, put that white glitter HTV on the shirt and then put your uh, infusible ink transfer on it. One tip I have for that is I noticed that as we heat the infusible ink transfer sheets, they shrink just a little bit. So if you tape it down in the exact spot you want it to go, your shirt kind of then shrinks along with it instead of it shrinking um, without the shirt. And then it looks, it all matches up better and it stays in position better. So definitely use the Cricut heat transfer tape when you are putting the infusible ink transfers on top of the white glitter HTV. Yes, I washed all of these shirts first because we don't want to worry about whether we have sizing in them or anything like that. Just it's so there, you know, there's kind of like differing opinions about whether you should wash them first. Cricut, by the way, doesn't say that we need to wash these first for infusible ink. So I don't think that matters, but you know, it helps with like shrinking and stuff. Um, the only time that you might not want to wash a shirt first is if you're planning to sell it because, um, it never looks new after you've washed it, right? So instead, get ones that are pre-sized, you know, so they're already like pre-shrunk and then, but don't wash them and then, you know, it looks better. That's what I hear at least. I don't sell my shirts or anything like that. Um, Nessie says, is there an easy way to weed the infusible ink? I think it's actually really easy to weed. I did all of these hearts and there's like a, a lot of them super fast. If you use the bend and crack method, you know, so you just kind of, bending it and making sure all the edges are lifting up, it actually comes off really easily. And if you watch my other videos, you can see me actually weeding the, uh, the transfer sheets and how it's different, right? It's different than how we weed vinyl and I like it a lot better. Vicki says, does the glitter after the infusible ink feel like vinyl? Nope. It feels like glitter. It feels like, um, I mean, just touch it again. 
It feels, you know, so you know the way glitter feels? It's got almost like a kind of like sandpapery feel because it's got all the little glitter parts embedded in it. That is what um, it feels like. Janet says, uh, what time and temperature did you use for these shirts? I used uh, the I used Cricut's Easy Press Heat Guide for all of for base. You know, I used it for Cricut shirt. That's the only one it gives me the time for. So I used the exact same time and temperature for all of them, which was 385 degrees on my Easy Press two for 40 seconds. You could also have done your Easy Press one at what would it be 360 degrees because it's the highest it goes up. So probably a little longer. I just don't happen to know what that is. But Cricut has an excellent uh, heat press guide that you would just use to determine what that would be. Um, thank you, Joe. I'm really happy that you like my testing. <laughs> I'm checking for more questions to see if you guys have any more questions before I wrap up tonight. This is a great time to throw them out there for us. Uh, Lori says, what do you do about the different heat settings for vinyl and then infusible ink? So I simply followed the heat transfer settings for vinyl. And once it was in place, I let it cool a little bit. So, you know, it was more, you know, it wasn't like still, you know. In fact, you have to wait until the glitter is cool to even pull off the backing anyways. Um, and when I put, I didn't have no issues. It worked. <laughs> I simply used the same settings for the infusible ink that I used for all the other shirts when I put it on top of the glitter. So I didn't even worry about it because it was a test, right? It was okay to try it. And if it didn't work, then, oh, well, we just try it again. So, but it worked. So I used the, the normal settings for glitter, heat transfer vinyl, and then I used the normal settings for infusible ink on top of that white glitter. Megan says, do you reuse the butcher paper? So I made a lot of t-shirts. I did not use two sheets of butcher paper, for, brand new sheets of butcher paper for each of these shirts. So I found that my butcher paper wasn't transferring, nothing was getting transferred to it. I was having no issues. And I, um, I think I only ended up using like four sheets for all of these shirts. So I reused it. I always checked it to make sure that I didn't see any, anything being transferred to it that would then transfer to one of my new shirts, but it didn't, so it was fine. Uh, Janetta says, I was hoping you would test the pens. In my experience, there's no difference between how the pens and a transfer um, sheets go on to materials. If you are curious about how the pens work, I have a whole video on that, right? So you can just watch that video. But I've seen no difference in how they transfer. They transfer the same. It's the same ink. It's just one's coming out of a pen and one's on a transfer sheet. But it looks the same once we transfer it. it acts, we, we transfer it the same and it looks the same. So it wasn't necessary to do all of the testing. Gina asked if the white trans the white glitter was stiff like vinyl. Yes, it is because it's white it's white glitter it's white glittered vinyl that's there. The white glittered vinyl doesn't go away, so it has that same. It's not super stiff, but there's definitely something there. It's not like the awesomeness that is infusible ink, where it's totally weightless, right? You still it feels like vinyl with that's been colored. That's basically what all we're doing here. All right, let me just get down to the bottom. Let's see, someone mentioned parchment paper. No, do not use parchment paper. Parchment paper has a coating on it. Butcher paper does not. If you use parchment paper or wax paper, you can transfer that coating to your shirt. I have seen it done and it looks bad. Don't do it guys, don't waste your shirts. Use butcher paper. You can get it on Amazon very inexpensively. I have a giant roll of it, let me show you. I will put, um, maybe a member of my team can put the link. This is my big roll of butcher paper. It's gonna last a really, really long time. It was really inexpensive. You can get it, I'm pretty sure I heard people say they got it theirs at Walmart or their local grocery store, but you want white butcher paper. Don't substitute in this case. It's going to be a disappointment. It's not freezer paper either, guys. It's not freezer paper. Butcher paper, freezer paper has a coating on it. In fact, the most famous one has a plastic coating on it. You do not want to transfer that to your shirt. Butcher paper doesn't have the coating. You want that. Yes, thank you. Right, Ginger says, butcher paper, parchment paper, and freezer paper are all different. It's important that you use the right one because that coating will transfer. I've seen it happen. Okay, I think I have gotten everyone's questions. Just double checking. Oh, C says, can you use a heat press? Yes, you can. I just don't have one. So I use my easy press. So we use an easy press. 
Mary says, where would I find the video about the pens? Well, I'll tell you what, if you go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C slash Jennifer Maker, all of my videos are there, tons of them. And that's where you'll find my video about the pens, as well as my video about the um, infusible ink tote bag and the infusible ink t-shirt and infusible inks in general. Like I have, I think I have five or six videos on infusible inks at this point. Yep, I'm nuts. <laughs> I think I got them all. So I want to remind everybody that we're still having our summer maker giveaway. So uh, we are giving away a Cricut Maker and an Easy Press 2 and um, some infusible ink um, transfer sheets and markers and some copies of my Cricut Coach Playbook. If you are interested in entering our giveaway, go to jennifermaker.com slash summer dash maker dash giveaway. You have until July 12th, you can enter every day. One of the ways that you can enter is to put the word of the day, which you will find in a lot of my videos. Um, all the videos from December have a word of the day and the videos that I've been doing lately have a word of the day. And today's word of the day is going to be really easy and it's going to be t-shirt. All right, so you can, and you can enter every day, put in a different word of the day every day to get another entry. The more entries you have, the more likely you are to win. And that contest ends July 12th, okay? And I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I will put photos of all of the pre-washed um, photos, the pre-washed photos of all of these shirts over on my blog. So you can compare and we can really see the difference as we wash them. And I will throw them in the washer and dryer again so we can see if there's any more changes. Um, and if there are, I will post a photo of it. I suspect the cotton ones will fade quite a bit more and it would be good to see. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. We will be back next week on Wednesday at 7 p.m. I don't yet know what we're going to talk about, but if you have a suggestion for what you'd like to see in one of our live play tests, let us know. Um, you can email us at hello at jennifermaker.com. You can post over in the Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. You can comment on all, any of my videos, just... You can even let us know through the Summer Maker Giveaway form because there's a section there for you to give me your ideas. And I love hearing your ideas for things. And oh, one more question. Stephanie says, did I use dryer sheets? Nope, you're not supposed to use any dryer sheets. Greg did the washing and drying. Did you use dryer sheets? Nope, nope no dryer sheets. Because that's what the instructions say. The instructions say to turn them inside out, wash them and, and cold inside out, and then tumble dry low, no dryer sheets, no bleach, and no fabric softener. And that's what we did. So, mild detergent, right? Yes, Greg says mild detergent. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Thank you for your questions, for putting up with our technology issues. I always appreciate that. And I hope to see you next week. And I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, if you can tell me what you'd like to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time.